we're gonna take a look at a brand new function that Microsoft has introduced within Microsoft Excel. This function is called the regex extract function or the regular expression extract function. The purpose of this function, it allows you to extract a series of characters from a larger series of characters based on a pattern. Extract a text value from a larger string value. Here's an example. Open in front of you, I've got a workbook here called Excel Regx-01. I've made this file available so you can download it and follow along with me if you already have access to the regx extract function. Now it is brand new. It is currently only available to Office Insiders, those registered with that group, but it will be pushed out, rolled out to the general public whenever Excel gets around to doing that or when Microsoft gets around to doing that. You may have it already. So if you want, wish to follow along with me, jump down to the description of this video, just right down below. Look for the link to the Office new blog post where you'll find more information about this function, as well as a link at the bottom of that blog post where you can download the example file and follow along with me. Practice this function. So here's the examples I got. Inside of this workbook, first example, names 01, that worksheet. I've got a column of names here. But if you look closely, each cell within this column has multiple names first and last name pairs. So first I've got Jane Doe, separated by a comma, I've got John Doe, another comma, I've got Richard Smith. Now typically, if I wanted to break this column of values up into individual columns, for example, get Jane Doe and get John Doe and Richard Smith into their own cells, their own columns, I would use something like the text to columns feature on the data tab within Excel. But the text to columns feature relies on a single delimiter that informs it how to break that data up. Well, if you look closely at this, every single value is broken up by the same delimiter, a comma. So the text to columns feature, if I were to run this right now, I'd say, hey, my data is broken up by a comma. It would break up each individual value into its own columns. That's not what I want. I want the pairs, last name, first name, boop, last name, first name, boop, and so on. Put those into their own columns and then do that for the rest of the column here. Well, in steps, the regex extract function, based on a pattern that we specify, it'll break the data up for us. Now this function, it's not a very difficult function. It's actually pretty straightforward. It's got three arguments that we're gonna fill out, but, the difficult or the most time consuming part of this function is knowing what the pattern is and how do you message that to Excel? Well, the way that you message a pattern to Excel utilizing this function is through regular expression characters. Let's take a look at an example here. So I'm gonna jump into cell B3. So right here, I wanna get Happy Gilmore. That's what I want. So what's our pattern look like? Well, for happy Gilmore or Gilmore comma space happy, we've got a capital letter, whatever that happens to be, it could be A to Z, somewhere within that range, one of them. And then we've got a bunch of lowercase characters, A to Z, somewhere within that range. That specifies the last name. That's the pattern. There's a capital letter and there's a bunch of lowercase letters. Then we've got a comma, then we've got an empty space or a space, and then we repeat it again. We've got an uppercase character with a bunch of lowercase characters. That's what I want. That's really my pattern. Well, what's that pattern look like? Let's find out. B3, I'm gonna type in equals reg regular ex expression extract. There it is, reg x extract. Now, if you look closely here, it's actually got one, two, three, four different arguments for us to fill out. We're gonna take advantage of two of them to begin with, and then we'll see the third one. So the first thing it wants to know is, where's your text? Where's that big string of characters that I'm gonna look at? Well, our text is cell A3. 
Then I'm going to do comma. The next thing it wants to know is the pattern. Okay, you gave me the text. There's that big string of characters. What am I looking for in there? So the pattern is specified by text value. So I'm going to wrap this inside of quotes. So I'll open a quote. The first part of our pattern is going to be characters. They could be uppercase. They could be lowercase. Remember, that's how we're going to specify the name. So I'm going to open up a square bracket, and I'm going to bring in capital A hyphen Z. So the first thing we want the reg X extract function to look for is a capital letter, and it can, it can fall within A to Z, somewhere in there, A, B, C, D, all the way to Z. The next thing I want it to look for is a lowercase version of that range, lowercase a through lowercase z. So now we're getting back the last name in this case. Now, if that's all I were to do right now, I'll close the, the bracket, I'll close the quote, and I'm gonna close the parentheses. I'm done with that function. If that's it, that's it. I'll hit my enter key. We got back the G. It found something from our pattern. The problem is there could be many of them. There could be many uppercase. There could be many lowercase. That's what I need to get back. So if I go back to that cell, give it a double click, open up my formula. Just after the close bracket, okay, our pattern that we specified there, uppercase A to Z, lowercase A to Z, I'm going to put a plus sign. This specifies or informs Excel or the function that there could be many of what I put inside of those brackets. I'll hit my enter key, and there's my Gilmore. Pretty cool. We're just specifying what it should be looking for. Now, like I said earlier, the most time-consuming part of this function is that pattern, and especially if you're brand new to regular expression patterns. We got to know what these characters are, and how do you type them out? How do I know to use square brackets? How do I know to use the hyphen, the plus sign, and so on? Well. If you jump out to your favorite search engine and type out regular expression cheat sheet, you'll find loads of websites that'll break down what all these characters mean. You can also go back down to the comments section of this or the description section of this, of this video and find the link to the Office new blog. And while you're down there, if you're enjoying this video, you're learning something new, make sure you give the video a thumbs up and if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you get updates about new videos that we add here about Microsoft Excel and other Office applications. Let's jump back in. So I need to finish off the pattern here. So right now we've just got Gilmore. Well, the next thing it should look for is a comma, right? We got the comma in there. Then the next thing it should look for is a space or white space in there. To specify this, I'm gonna do backslash and a lowercase s. That right there specifies the next thing after the comma you're gonna look for is white space. In our case, a single space. Then I need to get the first name. I'm just gonna repeat what I did earlier. A through Z, capital. A through Z, lowercase. Close the bracket, and there could be many of them. So I'll hit the plus sign. I'm gonna hit my enter key. And we've now got Gilmore, comma, space, happy. I can copy that down, get all those names. Now, I wanna take this function a step further. We've got many names inside that list, right? What about Harry Potter and Ron Weasley and so on? Well, if I go back to the function, give it a double click here, just after the close quote there, I'm gonna do a comma, because this is now gonna bring you to the next argument called return mode. And it takes one of three values, a zero, one, or a two. A zero is the first match, and that's all that'll return to you. A number one matches or will return all matches that it finds inside that string based on your pattern. So I'm gonna put a number one in there. I'll hit my enter key, and there's all the names. Copy that formula down. We got all the names right there. So believe it or not, this example right here is a question that I got a couple of months ago. Somebody came to me and said, hey, I got a list of names. They're all separated by these commas. How would I break that up? 
Well, again, my first reaction was, well, text to columns, that should work for us. Oh, wait, no, it's not because we got commas everywhere. And so I had to come up with this wicked, huge formula. It was absolutely ugly. And then a couple of weeks later, Excel or Microsoft announced this function, regex extract. I was like, ah, oh, <laughs> if only that was around just a couple of weeks ago. How quick was that? Regular expression pattern to extract a text value from a full string. So let's take this a step further. Let's hop over to the names too. This is gonna look almost identical with a slight twist. Here we've got a column of names, but for some odd reason, there's no space between the names. Now, once again, believe it or not, this is another question I got from actually a few students. This was a while ago. <clears throat> they ended up with a list of names, but no spaces between them. But if we look closely at this, there is a pattern. Let's jump into B3. So once again, equals reg X extract. First thing it wants to know is where's the text? Right there, A3, comma. And then inside of quotes, what's your pattern? Well, our pattern is, they're all text values, A to Z, but the first character is uppercase and the next characters are lowercase. So here, I'm gonna bring in a square bracket, capital A to capital Z, and then close the bracket. That's the first thing you're gonna look for. Look for that, a capital letter, a single capital letter. So if I close that quote, close the parenthesis, there's my J, it found it. Let's get back in there. The next thing it should look for inside of square brackets is lowercase a to z, but there can be many of them. In steps the plus sign. Whatever's inside the, the square brackets next door, there could be many of those. So I'll hit my enter key and there's Jane. I'll copy that down. There's all my names. All right, let's try this again. Last name, this one's gonna be a little bit different. Still regex extract function, still cell A3, that's where we're gonna begin, comma. Now inside the quotes, my pattern, again, we'll start with the capital version of A to Z, just a single one of those, a lowercase A to Z. There could be many of those, but if I just finish this off, close the quote, close the parentheses, hit my enter key, this is no different than what we did before. There's Jane. Well, it's not Jane that I want, it's Smith or Johnson or Davis or Wilson or Martinez and so on. It's the last half, it's at the end. That's what I'm looking for. So back to my formula, just to the right of the plus sign, I'm gonna bring in a dollar sign. Dot dollar sign means the pattern that we're looking for is gonna happen at the end of the string or the end of the cell. I'll hit my enter key, there's Smith, and I'll copy that down. Johnson, Davis, Wilson, Martinez, Anderson, and so on. This is our regular expression to extract the last name from that set of values. Let's get, how cool is that? How quick was that? As long as we understand the regular expression patterns, those characters that we want to use to specify the pattern, Excel does it all for us. All right, let's take a look at one more. This one's a little more complex. So here, I've got a column. I've just generically called it text string. But inside of there, we've got a mix of just a bunch of words, spaces, and emails. There's some cells that contain a single email. There's some cells that contain multiple emails. I want to extract the email addresses from these text values. In steps, the reg extract function. Let's jump into cell B3. Once again, reg X extract. Where's your text? It's right here, comma. Now here's where it gets kind of freaky. Okay. Our pattern can be all over the place. So here, once again, inside of square brackets, I'll do a capital A hyphen capital Z. Right, we don't know, it could be uppercase. It could be lowercase, right? But somewhere within that range, that A to Z range. 
Now there could be other symbols in there. There could be dots, right? There could be underscores. There could be a whole slew of characters inside there. I'm just gonna stop right there, but it could be all sorts of things. So I would specify each valid email character that could be used in the first set before the at symbol. I'll close that bracket. I'm gonna hit the plus sign because there could be many of each of those characters. Well, what comes next inside of an email? After the name, then we bring in the at symbol. Right? All right, so now we got the first part. Let's, let's say that's, that's it. That's all I'm gonna do. I'll close the quote, I'll close the parenthesis I'm gonna hit my enter key and we're almost there. So we got john.do at, now you need to get the rest of it. Well, let's get back in there again. All right, what's next? Brackets again. Now this one, it could be uppercase. It could be lowercase, right? It could be all sorts of things inside there, right? It could be the, the dots again. It could be the, the underscores. It could be whatever, right? I, I don't, I, as long as it's a legitimate value inside of an email address, it needs to go in here because it could potentially be there. I'm gonna stop right there. I don't think I ever see dots. I mean, we're gonna see a dot but that'll be a literal character. That's something literal will look for. Now here, oops. We're gonna close that bracket. There could be many of them, okay? Now the next thing I'm looking for, I'll do a, a backspace or a backslash again, is the dot. We're gonna look for that literal character there, that dot. Let's see, I'm just thinking. Yeah. I could look right here. <laughs> Let's see, we got the company name. We got the, oh, excuse me, we got the, the email name, the at, then we got the, the domain, then we got the dot. All right, and then we got the last part. Now the last part is gonna be a little bit different, different than what we've seen before. This one could be three characters. It could be two characters, right? Like dot CA. So here, I'm gonna bring in the capital A to Z again. I don't know what they're gonna be. They could be lowercase, they could be uppercase, but somewhere within that range, I'll close it. But here, there's gonna be at least two characters. There could be three, okay? but at least two characters inside there. So here, inside of curly braces, I'm gonna bring in two comma, and then I'm gonna close it. So that two represents that it can be two characters or more, okay? but at least two characters. And I think that's good. I'll hit my enter key. All right, there's john.do at example.com. I'll copy that down. All right, there's dot info. That one's a little bit bigger. I don't think we have any that have two in there, but we got those first emails. But remember, some of these contain multiple emails. So back to my formula. Just after the quote, once again, I'll do comma, and the number one to return all matches. I'll hit my enter key. Copy that down. And there's all of my emails. Let's expand that out. There we go. Reg extract, reg x extract function, all based on a pattern, a regular expression pattern to extract, the, extract those values. Now there's other things we could do here. If you just wanted a comma delimited string of those emails, you could bring in something like the text join function and then nest, nest the regex extract function within there, and then you can string them all together. But try this out. Brand new function, very cool, gonna save you loads of time. If you've ever done something like this manually, ah, what a pain. So. I hope you've enjoyed this, this video. I hope you enjoyed learning about the regex extract function. If you have, make sure you give the video a thumbs up. I really appreciate it. And if you haven't already, smash that subscribe button so you get updates about new videos that we post right here. Until I see you in the next video, have fun.